Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Noir Histoire. I'm Natasha, and today I'll be reviewing Manchild in the Promised Land by Claude Brown. I started reading Manchild in the Promised Land after struggling to get through the first chapter of Soul and Ice by Eldridge Cleaver. Some held Soul and Ice as being an important work of black literature, yet others regard it as being an utter tribe. I'm of the latter opinion. Going into Soul on Ice, I knew that Cleaver was a predatory rapist. He planned to take revenge on white men through the revolutionary act of raping white women and practiced by first raping black women. This convoluted plan reflects his rambling writing style and misogyny masquerading as black manhood. There are and have been many despicable people in the world, some of which I've read books about, but Eldridge Cleaver was a terrible person and his writing was equally appalling. I gave up on that book during the first chapter. I often keep the book on standby in case I need a break from or give up on my first choice. Man Child in the Promised Land came through in the clutch. In some ways, this is a book about a rambunctious boy and his group of friends coming of age in the 1940s to 1950s. In a different place, and if Claude were of a different race, this could have been an innocent and heartwarming story. But on the gritty streets of Harlem, Claude's life is rife with violence, crime, and despair from a young age. Claude and his friends chase new opportunities to prove they're bad and or to have fun moving down the path to self-destruction. Great school hooky and petty thefts progress to more delinquent behavior and serious punishments. Nights at children's centers give way to lengthy stays at detention centers. Childish scrapping leads to rumbles, stabbings, and shootings as teens. They mimic the older guys drinking, smoking reefer, and sniffing coke. Many of the boys graduated to experimenting with and becoming addicted to heroin. Many of the kids have no guidance and struggle to survive due to their alcoholic or otherwise absentee parents. The struggles is hopeless and in some cases forgotten children reminded me of the kids from the corner. One major difference that threw me off was that Claude, unlike many of his peers, had both parents in the home. Neither parent had a criminal record or addiction issues. At a few points in the book, Claude hints at his behavior being a result of emotional issues. Claude also seemed to respond best to adults who spoke with him and also seemed to listen to him. It was obvious that Claude's parents cared about him, but they had a hard time understanding and relating to him, especially his father. Claude's father attempted to instill discipline in his kids, but he went to extremes with beating his sons, which pushed them further into the streets. It became obvious that Claude and many of his peers were trying to find themselves in some peace through misguided means. Their parents, those who stuck around and tried to actually raise their kids, couldn't help them navigate Harlem. Their parents were migrants from the rural south with limited experiences and opportunities. Living in the North, even with all its squalor, was a step up for many, so their expectations were low and few. The relative freedom of the North satisfied their dreams after the South suppression. Their lives revolved around liquor, sex, religion, and violence, so they pushed this on their kids. Yet their children had grown up in the North near endless possibilities. The kids wanted more, and the parents couldn't understand why. This tension coupled with vices that the parents had never dealt with. Their parents couldn't understand what they were facing in society, Harlem, or even within themselves. I went back and reread parts of the book while I was writing this review. I can't pinpoint what changed, but I saw more depth in the story the second time around. I was able to better identify what made the book work for me than Sol and I. Claude is a flawed individual, much as Eldridge Cleaver, but I was able to get into the book because it's well written and there's actually some growth and introspection. The major thing that made me dislike Claude was his misogynistic attitude, particularly his participation in a group attack on one woman and his treatment of the girls and young women he grew up around. I also raised an eyebrow at him placing a young white woman that he met outside of Harlem on a pedestal. He compares her ladylike behavior with the young women from his neighborhood. He refers to these girls and young women as bitches, whores, etc., but seems to only sleep with prostitutes. Claude complains about the women he's had contact with in Harlem being uncouth, yet he's a criminal who doesn't seem to have many redeeming qualities. He treats women harshly, but promotes a woman deeming him unworthy. Yet, as I reread Manchild in the Promised Land, I came to see him and the men in his environment as misanthropes, exhibiting antisocial behavior. They pose a danger to the women in their environment and see them as objects for sexual or financial gain, but they also view men as objects to dominate and exploit. Most of their relationships are unhealthy and built on coercion and manipulation, and they don't treat themselves much better. Claude's perspective changes as he begins to spend more time outside of Harlem. This results in a shift in the way he views and interacts with his Harlem acquaintances. He was hard and rough as a child, which made him sometimes laugh at others' misfortunes, but there were glimpses of his sensitivity. As he matures and catches up with old friends, their conversations are deeper and he appears more sympathetic to their hardships. I thought Manchild in the Promised Land was well written the first time I read the book, yet revisiting the book allowed me to better appreciate Brown's writing. 
I also came to understand what makes so many people hold it in high regard as a life-changing book. Plot is flawed, but imperfect characters have never gotten in the way of my appreciating a good story. You might enjoy Manchild in the Promised Land if you're interested in coming-of-age stories. The book would be an especially good read for fans of The Corner. In some ways, the book picks up where the warmth of other suns left off by telling the stories of the children of the Great Migration. But I'm still not going back to read, nor do I recommend Soul and Ice. Life is too short. Thanks again for tuning in, and I hope you return to listen to future episodes. For more information about Noir Histoire, visit the Noir Histoire website at N-O-I-R-E-H-I-S t-o-i-r dot com. There you'll find text, video, and audio for each episode all in one place. Subscribe to the Noir Histoire newsletter to get fresh content delivered straight to your email inbox. You can also subscribe to the Noir Histoire YouTube channel for videos. I also occasionally post videos on Facebook. If you're enjoying the content but would prefer to listen to audio, you can subscribe to the Noir Histoire podcast via iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and SoundCloud. If you subscribe, please also take a few minutes to rate and review the show in iTunes. Follow Noir Histoire on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr, and Google+. Enjoy the rest of your day.